Good morning. Did you see or feel the sun just suddenly come out? It was beautiful. I'm sitting there and then just this ray of sunshine. So it is good to be with you this morning. I'm glad to see you all gathered here. You'll see the beautiful flowers on the altar. They came from Laura's service yesterday. And so thank you for leaving those for us. I have a few other announcements this morning. We will be gathering this afternoon from 4 to 6 to decorate the sanctuary tree. We'll set it up. We'll use some of our older ornaments. And then the sewing group made some newer ornaments. And so we'll be able to do that and decorate the sanctuary. Uh, for the Advent season and Christmas season, which starts next Sunday. This morning, I also bring you greetings from Todd Smith Lippert. Guess how long ago he was our intern? I couldn't believe this. 10 years ago? More. More. 20 years ago, he said. So he and John ended up on a Zoom conference working on something with the legislature and they recognized each other in this Zoom meeting and so they met virtually afterwards and had a conversation. It was, I popped in for just a little bit. His oldest daughter is a senior in high school. So they live in Northfield and he was a pastor in Wisconsin. He was the lead pastor at uh, Northfield and now he is serving as a member of the Minnesota House of Representatives. So you can actually uh, Google him and he's on Wikipedia. <laughs> she has made it if you make it onto Wikipedia. So he sends his greetings. He has fond memories of being here at St. Mark's. Jean also wants to let you know the articles for the monthly newsletter, the messenger are due not on the 25th since that is Thanksgiving, but the 26th the day after. So if you have anything, please send it directly to Jean. And there are still some pecans available to buy. They are $7.50 for a 12 ounce bag. And if you are watching this from home and you want a bag or two, please let me know because there are others who are chomping at the bit to take up the extras. I think that is all the announcements I have for this morning. So I would invite us into a moment of silence where we can quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship this day. Please join in the call to worship. Gracious God, give us generous hearts to share whatever gift it is that you have given to us. Gracious God, give us generous hearts to acknowledge you as the giver and source of life. Gracious God, give us grateful hearts to give without counting the cost. Gracious God, Give us unselfish hearts to share without expecting something in return. Gracious God, give us compassionate hearts to hold all of our treasures with open hands. Gracious God, give us freed up hearts to have gospel priorities. Gracious God, give us loving hearts to recognize the abundance of blessings in each passing day. Gracious God, give us seeing hearts to fall more deeply in love with the God of all generosity. Gracious God, give us generous hearts. Together, let us join our voices in the opening hymn, Come, Ye Thankful People, Come.
Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of life and breath, for the gift of gathering this day. Bless us as we hear your words. Help us to live our lives as grateful and thankful people, counting our blessings one by one. Strengthen and nurture us. Draw us closer to one another and to you, and then send us out into this world to be a people of hope, a people of love. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and one another in the prayer of confession. Beckoning God, you invite us to walk the narrow path and to live lives worthy of the gospel. Yet how often we hold a grudge, sustain a pout, harbor a complaint. We are preoccupied with our hurts and absorbed in the little injustices done to us. We neglect our high calling to visit the sick, care for the poor, feed the hungry, confront the oppressors, and work for the new reign of God. Empowering God, open our eyes and strengthen our wills to care for the ill, to shelter the homeless, provide security for the abused, to feed the hungry, and to work for justice so that systems and institutions care for the well-being of all. Let our lives be worthy of Christ the King, the Prince of Peace, the Redeemer of all. Amen. I invite you to a moment of silent confession. Amen. Hear these words of assurance that when we confess our sin before God, God does, in, does indeed forgive us of sin and invites us to live life anew. Friends, believe in the gospel that in Christ we are forgiven once again. This is good news indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Evelyn, I see Rowan. Come on up. Oh, and you're bringing friends with you, I see. Come on up. Who is that? Oh my gosh, both of you have friends. Okay, good morning. Who's your friend, Rowan? I don't know. You don't know? Just your friend? Oh, he's a cuddle bear. A cuddle bear. Oh, I love cuddle bears. And who's your friend? Um, I forgot her name at home. That's all right. She's something cute to cuddle, too. You both have cuddle bears, cuddle friends. Oh, look at the big eyes on that one. Oh, my goodness. Well, I brought someone, too. Can you see? Who did I bring, do you think? You don't know, right? You don't know because I don't have my friend with me. But my friend is somewhere in the sanctuary. And I want you to see if you can't find my friend. And I'm going to give you a little hint because how do you know what you're looking for if you don't know what you're looking for? My friend is about this big. Rowan, it's about this big. And it's orange and brown. And it's kind of soft. So go run around the sanctuary. This is when you get permission. Run and see if you can't find my friend. Go. Don't run too fast. Go. go look. Go look. Look in the sanctuary. See. Look in the pews. Where is my friend? Do you see him? Oh, looking underneath. 
Okay, how about on the other side? <laughs> Should we play hot and cold? Oh gosh, you're getting cold, 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 cold. Really cold, really, really cold. <laughs> how about try the other side? <laughs> how about try the other side? Look around, quick, quick, quick. Where is my friend? It's not on the floor, I don't think. Unless my friend moved closer to me. Walk over there. Try that aisle. Go right through. All the way through. Do you see my friend? Bring my friend to me. Yeah. Sometimes it helps to have help looking. Look at my friend. Oh. Did you see my friend? Do you know what my friend's name is? You do? What's my friend's name? Turkey Lurkey. And I have had Turkey Lurkey for years. And oftentimes I bring Turkey Lurkey on Thanksgiving because this week is Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving is all about turkeys. Right? That was a trick question. Is Thanksgiving all about turkeys? It's a little bit about turkey, right? Lots of people eat Thanksgiving turkeys. Do you think we should eat turkey lurkey? No. No, I don't think turkey lurkey tastes very good. He's kind of old, yeah. and he's actually kind of not that tasty. Yeah. But Thanksgiving, lots of people do eat turkeys, but Thanksgiving is even more so about giving thanks. Right? If you just switch the two words, Thanksgiving, it's giving thanks. What is one thing that you can give thanks for? Can you think of anything? How about this little friend right here? Can you give thanks for her? How about you, Rowan? Can you give thanks for your cuddly bear? I can give thanks for my turkey lurkey. <laughs> I can give thanks for you. I can give thanks for you. I can give thanks for this church. I can give thanks for some place to lay down and go to sleep at nighttime, right? In your cuddly blankets. I can give thanks for toys. I can give thanks for love. There's so many things. Do you think that we could sit here all morning and think of things we could give thanks for? We could, should we do it? <laughs> I hear there's a Vikings game and somebody might wanna go home and watch some football. So I guess we shouldn't spend all morning giving thanks. But on Thanksgiving, I want you to especially think of Turkey Lurkey, but also to thanks, to give thanks for all the blessings in our lives, all the good things, all the love and care, and this, even just the really simple things. And do we only do it on Thanksgiving, do you think? We should give thanks every day. So let's say a word of prayer, and then I think I'm going to protect Turkey Lurkey just in case somebody else might want to take him and eat him on Thanksgiving. So let's say a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for this week and for the gift of thanksgiving, but especially we give thanks to you for those who love us and for our homes, for those special things in our lives, and for your presence with us always. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up and finding Turkey Lurkey. You know, he tends to run away occasionally. Maybe I should keep him super close to me. You think? Or do you want to watch him for me while I preach? You're not sure? Okay, I will take turkey lurkey. All right, thanks for coming up, you guys. Thanks. Oh, look at, look at those nails. They're every other color. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And you have them too? And yours are every other color. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. my nails are not every other color. What color? I like the sparkles. They're beautiful. All right. Well, I will see you in a little bit, okay? Maybe next Sunday I will have to have sparkly nail polish. I'll work on it.
so this Sunday, as you already heard, well, maybe I didn't tell you yet. I can't remember now. But it marks the last Sunday of the church calendar year because next week begins the Advent season. So the church calendar year is not January to December. It's not a fiscal calendar year, which those seem to vary all over the place. Maybe, I don't know, June to June. But the church calendar year is based on the life of Jesus. And so it always starts in Advent, preparing for the birth of Jesus and goes through until the end of the season of Pentecost. So this past few weeks in the fall, we have heard and spent many weeks in the Older Testament, hearing stories of creation, of Abraham and Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Samuel and David, the prophets Elijah and Amos. And this day, we turn to the Newer Testament and hear a story of Jesus from the Gospel of Luke. This is Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out to saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, Jesus said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. When Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then Jesus said to him, get up and go on your way, your faith has made you well. Over the last few years, you have often heard that one of my favorite authors, Anne Lamott, writes, I do not know much about God and prayer, but I have come to believe over the last 25 years that there's something to be said about keeping prayer simple. She wrote a book that was published in 2012 with the title, Help, Thanks, Wow, Three Essential Prayers. All of her prayers, and I would say all prayer in general, are essentially variations on these three. She wisely says that prayer is about relationship, relationship between us and God, a reaching upward toward light and warmth, a reaching inward toward our real, authentic selves. As we enter into this Thanksgiving week, a time of turkey and dressing and yams with little marshmallows, or not, according to John. Sweet potatoes and green bean casserole with little crunchy onions, or not, according to my dad. Mashed potatoes and gravy with, with giblets, or not, according to me. And cranberry sauce or gel. Do we have a preference? Who's a cranberry sauce person? Who's a cranberry gel person? Oh, it's pretty evenly divided. We might have to split the church based on that controversy. It is also Thanksgiving time for pecan pie or apple pie or pumpkin pie. It's a time for shopping and discounts, getting great deals on washing machines or clothing, Christmas decorations. And oh yeah, a time of giving thanks for the many blessings in our lives. So it seems fitting we spend a little bit of time looking at these three prayers through the lens of the gospel reading this morning and then taking a bit of time to reflect upon our own lives in light of these three. So in the gospel of Luke, Jesus is traveling toward Jerusalem through the region between Samaria and Galilee. Now, some might not think anything of this, but we know that Jews did not go anywhere near Samaria. The Samaritans were a despised group, inferior and not worthy of time or energy, according to some. They were Jews from the former northern kingdom, and Jesus and crew were Jews from the former southern kingdom. 
the Hatfields and McCoys, you might say. Although by this time in Jesus' time, both kingdoms had been conquered by foreign nations long, long ago. They were related one to another, yet they were deeply hostile one to another, both believing that they were in the right. Isn't it interesting how often Jesus travels through Samaria and interacts with Samaritans in the Gospels? Well, some things never seem to change, and we could say the same today. The rhetoric and hostility is blatantly apparent between Democrats or Republicans, even as they both profess to be working for the good of the people in this nation. And it's difficult to see how much will get done as they dig in their heels, convinced that their way is the only way. Much can be said over the decades with the rhetoric between conservative Christians or liberal Christians or progressive Christians. Yet aren't we all part of the body of Christ? Much of the same can be said for any matter of difference between peoples, whether it's gender or sexual orientation or where you come from or the language you speak or what color your skin is or the religion you hold dear, including some with none at all. So much energy is spent vilifying the other, ostracizing the other, rejecting the other. This has been going on forever. Well, Jesus enters into a village and a group of lepers see him. They don't go near him because they know they're not allowed to be near anyone else except themselves because leprosy was a loosely defined term to describe any kind of skin eruption that looked suspicious. Think of all those young biblical kids that had teenage acne. I wonder if they were banned as well. It was thought leprosy to be contagious, and so those with leprosy lived in isolation, banished from their homes, from the people they loved, from their faith community, put on the outside of town. But they see Jesus, and they call out, Jesus, have mercy on us. Heal us from this disease so that we might return to our families and our community and our livelihoods. Heal us so that we might embrace our children once again. Heal us so that we might no longer be seen as less than, no longer held in fear and suspicion, ostracized and left to die. Help, right? And Jesus sees them and has mercy on them. And he tells them to go see the priest, the one who could certify that the leprosy is gone and the person is fit once again for inclusion within the community. They are made clean. But then we read as they go on their way to the priest, one of the ten turns back and gives thanks. Nine keep on walking, but one stops and turns around and falls on his face at the feet of Jesus. Thanks. But here's the kicker. Who was the one that turned back? The Samaritan. The one who turned back and praised God was the Samaritan, a people held in contempt by all the other Jews. It was the Samaritan, one who was seen as less than, who recognized a gift when he saw it and experienced it and returned to say thank you. Who would have expected that? Wow. Don't you kind of wonder why only one turned back and gave thanks? Weren't all ten healed? Was it the Samaritan's good upbringing? Was it that his mother harped on him time and time again to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, until it became a habit? Was it to shame the other nine? And really, even more so to shame those who were hearing this story, who expected one kind of ending and got a completely different ending. We don't really know, but we do know that many, if not all, of Jesus' parables contain an unexpected twist, told so that the listener, the hearer, might reflect on their own life. Jesus, have mercy on us. Help Praise God, I am clean. Thank you. It was the Samaritan that turned back and gave thanks. Wow. 
These scriptures bear witness to this three-part understanding of prayer time and time again. God hears the cries of those who call out to God, save us from our enemies, save us from hopelessness and despair. I look to the hills from where does my help come? Let this cup pass. Help. God works to bring good out of evil, blessing out of curse, life out of death. It is God who has led us out of bondage and into freedom. Morning has broken, new mercies I see. God has heard my cries and been gracious unto me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thanks. David Luce, a commentator, writes that a simple word of gratitude opens us up to a world of abundance and mercy and grace. It may seem a small thing, noticing and thanking, but it's the first step to settling, to setting in motion a cycle of gratitude and grace. And miracles still happen, small and large, time and time again. A sinner is welcomed at the table, a son is forgiven, 5,000 are fed, water flows from the rock, a woman is healed, hearts are opened, outcasts are embraced. A table is set, and all are invited to come and eat and drink. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Wow. Prayer is not just about asking for what we need or what a loved one needs or what the world needs. Prayer is also about expressing thanks for the many blessings that are showered upon each and every one of us. And it is also about being open to the awe and wonder of this world in which we live. So with this all in mind, I thought this Thanksgiving week, we take some time to reflect on what our prayers might look like with the framework of help, thanks, and wow. So I'm going to invite you to take a couple minutes to think about what each of these prayers might look like for you this day. For what or who are you praying for today? Is it for yourself? Is it for a friend or loved one or for the world in which we live? For what do you give thanks for this day? Is it for food or shelter, simply the gift of gathering? Is it for health or strength or a restored relationship that has been broken? And what is it that gives you a glimpse of the holy? What makes you say, wow? Is it the sun shining through the windows or the warmth of community or an answered prayer? Is it the smile of a child or the excitement of a new possibility never imagined? These are your prayers. They do not need to be shared. And so we'll spend a couple of minutes and I invite you to reflect on help. Thanks. Wow. And then after a brief time, we'll together say amen, trusting that God who knows our hearts will receive all our prayers offered this day. So I invite us to a time of silent prayer.
help, thanks, wow. Let's all say together, amen. Please join in this litany of thanksgiving as we move and continue in this service where we gather together to give you thanksgiving and praise, eternal God. We remember your many blessings of this past year of food and shelter of love and life. We gather together to give you thanksgiving and praise, generous God. We remember those times of wonder and joy, plenty and celebration. We gather together to give you thanksgiving and praise, joyous God. We remember your presence with us always, especially in times of difficulty, loss, and distress. We gather together to give you thanksgiving and praise, compassionate God. We remember those near and far who lack the basic necessities of life. We commit to share our blessings and our lives with others, gracious God. We gather together to give you thanksgiving and praise, faithful God. God is indeed faithful and has blessed us in so many ways. And so we are invited to share from those blessings with others. And so you are invited to give to the mission and ministry of this church. You can give and the offering plate in the back of the sanctuary, or you may give via PayPal. And we give thanks for your generosity. We'll continue this morning with our joys and our concerns, as well as some time of silent prayer. And I have a few joys and concerns to share with you. Most of you have heard these already, but I will share them again. Marianne, our dear Marianne, fell on Tuesday, and she ended up with a concussion. She broke her hip and a few ribs as well. So she was in ICU for a couple of days and is out of the ICU, but is still in the hospital. And so prayers for her as she makes decisions and her family makes decisions about future care and what lies ahead for her. Also prayers for Christy, who, uh, who asked for prayers uh, dealing with a rapid resting heart rate. And so we lift up Christy as well. Um, she doesn't meet with the cardiologist until the 17th of December. That is a long time to wait. So prayers for Christy as she continues through her days and as she waits to see the specialist. Prayers for Laura's family as well as yesterday her memorial service was held. Hold them in your care and compassion and lift them up in your prayers as well. I don't know that there are any others this day in particular. So I'd invite us to a moment of silent prayer where we can lift our joys and our concerns up to God and then I will join us together in the words of the pastoral prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks to you for hearing all of our prayers, our prayers of help, our prayers of thanks, and our prayers of wow. This day we especially lift up to you those whom we've named. We lift up to you, Mary Ann, who has had such a tough year plus. We pray for healing of her body and wisdom for her and her family as they go about making decisions about future care and possibilities, whether that be surgery, 
surely it will be some time for healing and physical therapy. Help her to know that though she is not with us, she remains in our hearts and minds always. And be especially close to her in the days and weeks and months yet to come. We also lift up to you, Christy, who is dealing with a fast heartbeat and has to wait yet almost a month to see someone, a specialist. Be with her as she goes about her very busy days of work and being a parent. Surround her and Ryan and the kids especially with your presence. Help them know that each and every day you walk with them. And we pray that some answers might soon come about. Holy God, we also lift up to you, Cindy and the Vandewa family as they said goodbye to Laura yesterday at a memorial service. We give thanks for Laura's life and especially we give thanks for the care that her family gave her for so long. Comfort them and be with them. Help them hold close to the many memories they have in their hearts and minds. We give thanks indeed for the gift of life that Laura was to so many of us. And we especially give thanks that she is suffering and struggling no more and that she is with you. Holy God, we also lift up to you all those other people, people on our prayer list, people that we name to you. We lift up ourselves and our city and our state as we are still struggling so much with the infection rate and COVID. Seems like every day we hear of someone new who has contracted COVID and is struggling with it. There is so much hardship, so much heartache. We seem to be in this pandemic cycle that will never end. Help us to do what we can to be safe and to help others be safe. We pray that someday this will end and that we won't have to be so worried and so filled with the uncertainty of whether we're spreading it, whether we're contracting it. And we remember so many who have died from it and so many who still deny that it is even real. Sustain us in this pandemic that we are living in. Holy God, we also pray for so many in our nation where there is so much unrest, where in this world where there is so little peace to be found, where there is so much heartache, where there is hunger, especially this Thanksgiving Help us to be thankful people, not just on Thursday, but each and every day. And help us to share from our abundance with others who are just struggling to put food on the table or find a safe place in which to lay their head. Holy God, hear all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught all who would follow him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I invite you to stand as able as together we sing the closing hymn for the fruit of all creation.
most of all, that love has found us. Hear now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you peace this day and every day. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.